Uh, Wipe the slate clean. Wipe the slate clean. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, Michael, why don't you go back? Why don't you come back in and, and unmute yourself and tell, give Ira your observations just come, coming back from China. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just saying the, the, the rent to uh, the rent to buy ratio in the uh, Chinese housing market is outrageous. It's almost is doubled. The, the rent to buy ratio in China. Are you, are, are you, talk, are you, are you talking about cost or market activity? I, I'm sorry. Oh, so it's the, um, the cost of renting a mm -hmm. house versus buying yeah. a house. Okay, that's what I want. I just wanted to make sure about that. Okay. Yeah. It's outrageous in China. It's 38 years. If you want to buy a house really? and rent it out, you will get your money back after 38 years. Which in the United States is 18 years. Yeah. So it's either it's so, going to be that the rent is going to go up, skyrocket, or the price of houses will be coming down significantly. Okay, that's what I wanted, that's what I under, wanted to ascertain. So rents have not kept pace. And you, well, you have all this housing that was built, right? You have an excess, uh, you, you have had an excess amount of, of housing in the market, which has probably kept pressure on people trying to generate any type of revenue in order to, to meet their mortgage payments or uh, whatever debt they took on to do it. Yeah, so it's scary, but um, right now they're, they're, they're keeping the, house, uh, the housing markets up by migrating people from England to coastal cities, to the major cities, mm -hmm. like the capital, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou. So uh -huh. these are the only four cities that have positive inflow of you know, workforces. Mm -hmm. It is, it is interesting because, well, we're, we're hearing of it, you know, of course, over the weekend, there was some news about some banks uh, and lenders in China uh, being in a little bit of under stress. Um, yep. But so, I mean, it's where will it come from? But it, it's, it's good stuff because it's important. You know, the social economy is it's taken on a lot of debt to, to fuel its most recent, recent growth. And I'm talking about over the last 10 years, unaccustomed to how much debt that they've, you know, traditionally have taken on, but that's interesting. Something to pay, definitely pay attention to. Yeah. But the things that got all those uh, banks in trouble is not mortgages. It's the, um, um, the infrastructure development debts that each city issued on their own. Right. Yeah, right. To, to all the different provinces who yep. take on this enormous amount, and, and it's supported, of course, by the uh, uh, CCP. Party, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's good. And, and and you really need to keep this room posted, up to date on that, because that's. I mean, the fact that you, you read the original sources rather than the rest of us who have to get our news from, uh, like, uh, like for a minute, I believed. Uh, the PMI numbers that came out over the weekend, not for a minute, but no, I, I, I don't, you, you know, that's not new with me. I, for 10 yeah. years, I've talked about that. Hey, if you don't let Google operate freely, why should I believe one thing you have to say? But, <laughs> but it made sense because China should now start promoting some positive numbers because number one, it, it, first and foremost, it puts uh, Trump on the, uh, on the defensive, because his whole motivation is that he thinks that China, you know, is cratering economically. And uh, if the numbers start to turn, well, then then they have to rethink it in the uh, White House uh, conference room uh, about, you know, maybe they're not having the impact that they think. And, uh, you know, so I, I, that's when I saw those numbers. That's, that's immediately what I thought about. I could be wrong about that. But we shall see. No, I think you're right.
Okay. Uh, I, you know, I can't, I wish I could say I, I was, but uh, what else you got from China? Well, um, the necessities um, like food, fuel, um, they're really expensive now. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. for um, average people to afford them. So, so we have inflation on the rise. Yeah, huge inflation. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pork prices has been on skyrocketing for the past yeah. few um, weeks. So um, yeah, I know. Uh, what they do is they, take, they, they, they took pork prices out from the CPI numbers. They think it's cyclical. Oh. So <laughs> it's not representative of the real situation. That's what they were saying, the, the officials. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they should borrow the Fed language and just call it transitory. Yep, <laughs> so transitory. Yeah, we'll, 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 get it. we'll get rid of that. Yeah, transitory. No, no need to pay attention to that. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Okay. Yeah, what else did you guys talk about? News was all, all the shopkeepers in Hong Kong because they're – their revenues are down so much. What they said, twenty six percent in some cases, uh, aren't going to renew their leases. Oh, yeah, it's been, it's important. Oh, and um, and the censorship is getting harder and harder in China. You cannot, you, you just basically can't say anything bad about a society or the situation that we are living in. <laughs> the censorship is just outrageous. Yeah, it's, uh, listen, that's going to be a problem that stays with them uh, until they're, you know, until they're much more comfortably where they sit. But uh, it, that won't stop the money flowing in, I guarantee you. Global investors will still be the path. Yep. But I think they are only going to all those four... Uh, those four major cities, which are uh, Beijing, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and um, Shanghai. Other mm. cities, they are fleeing. People are fleeing from the, uh, other, other cities. Oh, that's interesting, too. Um, it's, yeah, it's much to pay attention to. And is there just, while you were in China, where were you in China? Where's your home at? Um, Shenzhen. Oh, <laughs> you, must, you must be Han then because you're talking to us freely. Well, I, I, I get those firsthand, uh, firsthand um, experiences, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're from the Northwest, so you've always feared an invasion from the Russians. Uh, oh, no, it's the, um, <laughs> it's the um, uh, Southeast. Oh, you're, you're the, okay. Oh, no, no, right next to Hong Kong. Sin oh, I thought you said Xinjiang. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I thought you, you said, okay, sorry. Sorry, I missed bad, bad connection. I was like, oh, I'm going to get, a, I'm get on the ground uh, reports for Xinjiang, which will be interesting. Uh, but people don't realize that's been going on for so long, and there's, it, it won't change, uh, by the way, in Xinjiang. I, I love to listen to Westerners talk about it. Well, my response is, well, I guess you should return North Dakota and South Dakota to the Lakota Indians because you kind of broke all those rules, too, when you took them, when you sold their land from them after you put them on, on reservations, when you found out how mineral rich North Dakota and South Dakota. I, I mean, come on. You know, and the Chinese kind of throw that back at the U.S. all the time, which I I, uh, I find interesting because they, they actually read their history and know. So before you start throwing stones at everybody, you know, be a little more thoughtful. Uh, all right. Well, I'm not going to stay long today, but uh, let's move from China because I think Europe is the most fascinating story, but that shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, we had a lot of, lot of news out of Europe this weekend. Uh, and all our bursts the, are the Dow, the S&Ps are all up against the DAX and the Eurostock 50. Yeah, the DAX was weak, but I have to tell you, I, you know, as I wrote last night, I'm just viewing this as an opportunity. I actually put some on today. I've been 
I, I've been buying some Dax and I, I really loaded the spoos short against it. So I was, I was fine. And it worked because the Dax was already down big and the spoos were still up a little bit. So I, I said, what? And, and again, you know, I, I heard the initial part of this conversation, which was, and I sat here for 10 minutes and you guys were talking about the roles. Now, even beyond the roles in Europe, interesting that the European bond markets were down hard. And I think that they pushed the, uh, which led to, of course, look at the euro. The euro has found the rally. The Swiss was strong initially. And, you know, retail sales number, which came out in Switzerland, was okay. But I was a little miffed at myself because that was the only position I had was a little long, a small position in Swiss over the weekend. And I couldn't wait to get out of it when it really didn't move last night. Stupid, but I, I I sense that there's some, you know, as we've talked about, some change going on. But I was fascinated because what the guard is out there. To, several, first of all, the vote for the uh, Social Democrats in Germany puts a difficult situ- situation for Merkel, which now everybody views as good. They, I, I mean, for in 2017, you know. It, she or 2006, no, 2017, she was Times Person of the Year, the greatest leader. Now they can't wait to bury her and, and shit all over and tell her how weak she is. She can't make a decision. It's amazing, which is, again, I caution everybody, do never accept the narrative of the conventional media. Never. Because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They, they turn about so fast. Nothing. And if you're trade, don't trade off of that crap. It, it's, I know headlines are important because the algorithms move things. But here you have the woman who is the, the greatest thing ever. Well, now she's not so great. And now she's really got problems. But Lagarde is moving faster, faster than I thought she could possibly move. And, of course, the discussion was all about uh, a massive amount of uh, fiscal stimulus going into uh, green, and I use that with quotes, infrastructure projects, and even Germany uh, between the, uh, as I cited in the blog, I cited between the unions, which of course should be no surprise, but the, the uh, most powerful uh, business uh, lobby group pushing for a 450 billion uh, euro infrastructure spending program over 10 years or so. But these are, these are important things. And I think that's why the bonds, European bonds really got hit. And I'm really starting to believe, and I, I thought so and wrote about it when it happened that when Draghi did the next QE, that it was done to give uh, uh, regard some negotiating room because it almost now you have Viedman. There's an article in the FT today that Viedman apologized to Draghi for his uh, caustic nature and stance, and always saying no to uh, rate cuts and QEs. So there is definitely something going on here. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I can only see it. And and the fact that the European bonds were down immediately, immediately. You know, yeah, the bond opened a little, you know, uh, a little bit, a little bit higher last. Uh, didn't yeah, even get higher. Company ranges, and they just bombed them. Yeah, 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 and, and it's just, they're, they're, you know, they're talking about b- bad politics in Italy, but the Italian bond is down no more than the uh, than the. Uh, let's see, in yield, probably actually. Let's see. Hard to read this. Let's see. Oh, the Italian tenure is uh, up nine basis points. The German Bund is in yield, I'm talking about, is up seven and a half, and France is up 7.8. Now, put this one in your pipe and smoke it. The Italian tenure actually went positive today. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! But it's not insignificant, especially with the equity markets getting, you know, getting hammered. So, uh usually so let's let's remove oh they're they're buying bonds because you know the stocks are getting no this is this is almost this is the first thing we've seen reminiscence of of uh the last quarter 
of 2018 when bonds and and stocks were both getting hammered on a on an ongoing basis. So uh, today's interest. It, today's interesting, and and I'm early, and I'll and I'll be the first to tell you I'm early. But if Europe does get themselves uh, and convinces the market that number one they're going to stay in, even if they even if they were to go from negative rates to zero. Are you kidding me? Nothing. What is more important is that bond owners, and this is where I got into it a little bit with Mark Faber, because where he was laddering out thinking that, you know, again, we'll invoke Rich Dennis's uh, solar fool theory, that he'll be able to trade. And he said, it's only a trade. He'll be able to trade his way out of it. Well, I'm going to tell you what, there's some people taking some fairly sizable losses on these bonds. And I'm talking about Boone's Oats, because they were buying them at, you know, the Bruins, they were buying, somebody was buying them at negative 50, negative 60, negative 70. Uh, the oats at, you know, negative 30, 40. Well, you've got some some losses in here. And where do you think they're going? Especially if they embark upon a fiscal stimulus program. So be attentive here. Let's see if the pressure stays on the European bond market. Of course, it leads the U.S. bonds, but uh, are U.S. bonds a better buy? Is our U.S. is U.S. debt a better buy than uh, European debt? Uh, maybe, but I'm not. You know, I, we're not even going to get to the main. Well, we'll get to the main issue of Trump's uh, and and his uh, team's uh, ridiculous uh, statements about Brazil and uh, uh, Argentina. I mean, those are preposterous. Those are totally devoid of any sense of reality. Any sense of reality? It's just, it's just absolutely wrong. Everything that was in that statement, wrong. They're not purposely devaluing. They've got problems, political problems. Political problems lead to that. But I don't want to get away from Europe for a minute. So I think that you got to do your work. And Judd, we've talked about this. It's, I think the uh, the DAX, the S and P DAX, got almost to the 200-day moving average today on that, you know, simple spread that I like to look at. Hang on one second. Let me pull it up. I got to pull it up on another screen. I'm having, uh, uh, I had five hours of CQG loveliness this morning. Yeah, I saw your. Oh. Thing there. Okay, where is it? There it is. Hold on. At the daily, got to go to a daily continuation. Um, yeah, right there. Went right to it. Right to it, right? Right to it. It's trading there right now. Yeah. And that's another yeah, thing. Please. Make sure you're looking at the right chart because if you look at a daily, you won't see it. You have to look at a daily continuation. Yeah. And you can see it. And, and it's early. I'm not. But it's something that you have to pay attention to again, because you're, you know, if the United States equity market is is good, well, we don't know for why it's made its last leg up here, but it just has, and you'd be an idiot to fade it. Um, and nobody should have faded it this whole move because cheap money has prompted it. We know it's not the tariffs because the tariffs give it a boost, but then the market keeps rallying even when there's still uncertainty that exists. And so it lives on the hope that something will be resolved. Okay, I, you know, I get that. That's all part of it. But it's been the cheap money driving it. I want to see what happens in Europe because there are going to be losses. If this is sustained, and central bankers like Viedman and even Lagarde, they say, hey, to investors, if you bought these bonds, you run the risk. Sorry, sorry, you know, you were led to drink from that trough, but the risk is with you. And, you know, again, you could say, well, I'm going to hold them, but holding a negative coupon bond to duration is not really a, a, a wise strategy. And that's been my problem with all these, with all these people who've run in to buy this stuff. And I know people who need them for whatever reason. So it's, it's worth watching there. And I, and I'm, and I'm truly convinced that the, uh, um, the movement in uh, 
in the equity market, especially in Europe this morning, was due to the uh, initial onslaught uh, in, in the rise in yields. Uh, and there's something afoot. I can't tell you what's afoot, but there is something afoot in Europe. Uh, will it get final uh, authorization? Don't know. But uh, Lagarde really has something here that she's working on. And that's, again, you, the question was from day one, why Lagarde? And, you know, my stance has been, and Santelli and I, I'm, I was there the day they announced it because I was doing a Santelli. It's because of her political heft. And she may well get this done, uh, at least some sense of it. And, uh, you know, I used a quote in last night's blog, you know, that Peter Bookmeyer, well, not him, but it was from uh, Lagarde's speech, quoting, you know, uh, St. Augustine. So, oh, no, St. Francis, I'm sorry. I don't I, I don't want to confuse my my saints, St. Francis. And uh, she she's going to town on this, so don't minimize it. But if if it's right, let the market tell you that it's right, and and then because it's got a lot of room to move. Because relative, if you go back ten years, uh, oh, hold on, let's do that. You guys have those. I'm going to go to my S and P chart. All right, what do, what are we looking at here? I just want to see the 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 size of the move, and, and if you overlay the DAX, you know, then you can see, you know, which one. On it. yeah, now things aren't the same, but money is, you know, drives a lot of this. But a real fiscal stimulus for a lot of the undervalued, uh, I won't say undervalued, but underperforming is a better, much better word, underperforming European stocks, as we saw. Let's look at EWG, and we saw even though the DAX is making all-time highs, or or highs, EWG is well below the high that it made. As Judd will remind, as we call my daughter's wedding of 2018, so we're well under there. So there is room for Europe uh, for certain stocks to perform better. Is it beginning? I, I'm not. Sure. I don't know yet, but it is something to be attentive to. Because I'm going to tell you what, 2020 in the U.S., with all the uh, political crap that's going on, and I say it's crap because it's on both sides. Everybody's playing political games uh, to try to bleed into the election and make a difference. Do you think you're going to get any type of real – you're not going to get a tax cut in 2020, and you're not going to get any fiscal program unless things really uh, rapidly decline. But if things really rapidly decline, there are a lot of people out there – who ought to hang? Who ought to re retire? Because if you read most mainstream economists, uh, they're all convinced that the consumer is in great shape and there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, so things can't deteriorate that quickly, uh, because that's what that's what the uh, that again you know and and those are from some really good economists, but. Uh, I, I I proceed with with some uh, with some caution here, but I'm only looking. Okay, so if I go back to 2012, the S and P's have rallied from uh, 2011 from uh, let's say 1,200. So what what are we up? 170 uh, percent, uh, 180 percent. I'm just doing uh, relative analysis. I'm nothing more than that. Yeah, I mean, the EWG right now is at the 200 week, right at the cloud. So it's actually kind of yeah. an interesting spot because the VIX just had this huge, you know, not the VXX, but the VIX itself just rallied to its 200 day and rejected. Yep. And the low of the S&Ps is the gap. It's all 12 is also the reversal on the on the 50 by three. So that's now put in a pressure relief reversal. And you've you got the stops in the, in the NASDAQ bonds, the ORL stops in the NASDAQ bonds, and they were into some support. The Russell bonds got the stops and sort of the SPOO bonds. Now the question is what, what happens next? Well, that's right. And, and people, you know, I, as I wrote about the live last night, if the S&P is a tired bull, Okay, and I, and I believe the markets get tired. Now, that doesn't mean they have to break, but they can languish in a, you know, Q2 
continual range, you know, highs, you know, and, and just languish. We've seen that. In fact, I love when markets do that because it, it gives me a, a greater sense of where we're at. And if a market, believe, listen, I'm, I believe, especially when it comes to stocks in Q theory, Tobin's Q theory and, uh, you know, Smithers work on value in Wall Street, that a lot of things are mean reverting. And the way things can mean revert is that they don't have to do anything but go sideways and allow them to, ca- to allow the underlying fundamentals to catch up to where the price has been. And I, and I think this has been one of the main missing components uh, in, the, in the 10 years of QE. That's 10 years. And, I, you know, because we had, we had U.S., we had Japan, and then Europe joins the party in 2014, 2015 with QE. So it's been hard to do this. So even if it goes sideways, will other markets outperform? That to, that to me is the question. And listen, I, 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 I think that if the, if the world is in better economic shape than, than I theorize, then the emerging markets should outperform probably everything because they've probably languished more than anything else. But that'll be a story that unfolds uh, as we as we play out, you know, 2020. Every, you know, I, I, you know, I've heard it all. I know the U.S. market is better because U.S. laws are better. All true. That we have a respect for law. That uh, interest rates are low. The U.S. economy is okay. But you know, this market has run up quite a bit, and not even with tariffs. The tariffs, you know, we we've run as we as this room 14, 15 percent. We've had we've been on a straight up run. So can it can it is it entitled to to do nothing? Yeah, I would say a market's entitled to do nothing. Am I a little bit ahead of myself? Yeah, I, I probably. But I'm starting to, to look and see who's in who who may be a in a in a better position on a relative basis. Yeah, I'm looking at the Dow Gold too here, Ira. Right back to the 200 day. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'm glad you brought the gold up, Judge. It, it, you didn't bring it up directly, uh, but um, yeah. See, here's gold, and you but, want gold. All these charts, you have to make sure you're looking at the right. The active daily looks one way because that puts in the the, the the Feb contract and the March silver, so it takes into yep. the the spread. So you get a different looking chart than if you than if you look at a daily continuation. But but the gold was down this morning because the interest rates. By the way, if you it's uh, those algorithms are still a hundred percent plugged into that for the moment. So I love that because gold may break here. Gold may break down to the two hundred day. You know, as I said, you know it. It's had gold also had quite a run, and it's been as we see churning. But I love churning markets. But it can go down. It can go down and retest that whole day from uh, June nineteenth, I believe it was, when the Fed meeting, when the day that we really got a definitive statement from gold, when when uh, Powell really got uh, uber dovish and the market ran with it, and you had to be really quick to grab it that evening if you were going to play. But it's been a straight up move. It's entitled to to grind your course. All markets are. So, but you could see the power of the algos because as soon as the European bonds, you know, France, so it it then looked at itself and said, hmm, you know what? It couldn't throw that off. But again, I'm much more concerned about the short end relative to the gold over any type of uh, medium term trading period than I am about the long end. The long end can do funky things while the short end sits there. So, and we know that the Fed is on uh, is on watch to ensure that there is no uh, shortage of funds, especially as we head into the year. In fact, uh, Alexandra Harris wrote that piece this morning in which she told how much uh, they had to uh, increase a uh, term repo because they wanted to make sure to get through. They want to make sure to get through the holiday season. All right, so you want to look at the twos? 
in the Gulf, or you want to look at something else? Yeah, yeah, the twos are probably. I, you know, I, I've really never done that, but you know, I just eyeball them. Okay. So, yes, you can you can run that one and take a look at it. Okay, I see. And you see, you see, interestingly, from Friday to today, from th actually Wednesday from today, how those yield curves spun out spun upward you know we we recovered a lot of ground i think we were down to 13 and a half on the 210 on wednesday or something and we're at 21 this morning interesting I, i'm angry at myself because uh, for all your euro dollar traders i'm using the d's across the board but the d's 20 and 21s they went out to like seven and a half eight last week and now we're into two and a half so whenever there's a, that's an inverted curve, by the way, on the Euro dollars, 2021, but it's recouped like five base lines. I mean, that's like, that, that, as silver is the poor man metal, that's the poor man yield, yield curve right now. Because it, it's an inside, you get a lot of look at it. You should run that one for anybody who's interested because it is interesting to see it. So, I mean, it's gained like five points back in the last two days as, as the 210 wide. So that curve moves fairly dramatically with the steepeners. I'm just throwing that out there for something to watch. I, you know, I, I, there's not a trade that I, I do not tout trades. Uh, I discuss them, and maybe you, you'll find something there in the work in which you can put them on yourself. But I'm not going to tell you, oh, run and do that. Just something I see that pay that may be a uh, uh, um, an important indicator. That's all. That's all I'm looking at it in, as indicators. I think I have them on another page somewhere. I mean, my system's so screwed up with what these guys did. And, and I'll also tell you something about Europe. If we get out of this negative realm, and if that's the deal that Lagarde makes, we'll take the rates to zero, and we'll cut back to placate the Germans and we'll cut back on QE, on the recent QE, European bank stocks will get a bid because they've been so depressed. So keep your eyes on them. Another indicator. Yeah, there's the 210. I just put up the spread there. Um, I mean, because look at, Deutsche Bank is down three cents this morning. I'm giving, I'm going off U.S. prices. Uh, UBS is down uh, five cents. So even with these dramatic drops, what's the, what's the uh, DAX down for the day uh, percentage-wise? Two uh, percent? Yeah. I'm just speaking roughly. I'm not giving you, but it's down two percent. And yet, the bank stocks, of course, because you know, as you see the yields. So again, that gives you another another look, another look, and that's all I'm interested in. To keep finding things that uh, will will lead me to better plays, because I you, you see the correlations that the algorithms create, and those are very difficult to uh, to throw off. You see it. Today's this morning is a perfect example. Yeah. Now. The, the, the algos love following the Italian bonds and the gold. Yeah, well, and the bun. The bun was getting hammered this morning. I mean, the Italian jumped out, jumped, uh, yields jumped there because of supposedly political. Every day there is bad <laughs> politics. So uh, I, I, I don't know where they get that from. But the, and I'm going to end on this. The Trump discussion on tariffs on, on uh, Brazil and Argentina is just pathetic. Should we... Should we read the exact, what exactly said? Uh, let me go to it. Oh, okay, now we got Kelly and Conway out with a tweet. Uh, China possible for end of year. Trump campaign says we'll shut out Bloomberg News for bias. <laughs> yeah, bias. Let's see. Let's see. What was that tweet? Uh, oh, okay. 
Here it is. Brazil and Argentina. Here's this is directly from Trump. Uh, uh, Brazil and Argentina have been presiding over a massive devaluation of their currencies, which is not good for our farmers. Therefore, effective immediately, I will restore the tariffs on all steel and aluminum that are shipped into the U.S. from those countries. Okay? Then he says, Reserve, Federal Reserve light, should likewise act so that countries, of which there are many, no longer take advantage of our strong dollar by fur, further devaluing their currencies. This makes it very hard for our manufacturers. Okay. Now, should we let's just take this apart? Have been presiding over Matt. They're not the value of the currencies. Argentina's had political upheaval. Investors who bought Argentinian bonds, they're, they're fleeing. The markets are doing this. This is not contrived. There are those who, you know, uh, I'll call them out, but this is not contrived. So he's going to put there some. The problem that they are dealing with. Uh, is is this that china and mike if you're still there will be very attentive to this that china is not foolish so they see the brazilian real which is weak because of the problems in brazil they're going they're locking up forward purchases of beans because it is so friggin cheap uh, that they have an alternative. Now, the problem may be if the crop doesn't come in as big. So, and you see the beans, which, which started up today, now are, are making lows and really struggling because what Trump told you is that they can't get this done. And it's exactly what we talked about last week. And what, uh, Bob, are you, is Bob in today? Uh, Peter or Bob? From Kansas. Oh, uh, Robert. Robert, I'm sorry. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, I think Robert's around. He was in, he was in uh, Pax's room this morning, scalping like a fiend. Okay. okay. Yeah, he's here. So, all right. So Robert knows this that they're buying everything they can down in Brazil, and Trump admitted it because they can't get China to to acquiesce because China can hold out here buying everything in South America, buying everything in South America. And the fact that the real is at 421, uh, that's 4.21 real to the dollar, which is uh, maybe historical lows. They're taking advantage of it. Yeah, it's a, this is at 25 year lows for the existence of the tradable real. We are making new lows in the real, new highs in the dollar real. Okay. Chinese, so Trump is now saying that they're manipulating their currencies. No, they're not. The Chinese are just, there's room for them to maneuver. And it's interesting that Lighthizer has been quiet here, but we hear from Navarro uh, all of a sudden, Ross this morning. They're, they're flummoxed because there are alternatives, and this is what they destroyed. So, again, the goodwill that was exercised to build up U.S. Uh, agricultural exports for 40 years is being destroyed, and it's being destroyed because they didn't take into account that there are alternatives. And when these tariffs first went on in March of what, when was that, 2017, 2018? What, uh, how long has this been playing out? 2000, last year it started. Oh, so 2018? Yeah. Okay. So, and I, and I said in the blog on the day they did it, it, this, you couldn't have done it more wrong because they put the tariffs on during the Brazilian harvest. Well, the Bra Brazilians were bringing in a massive crop. The Chinese had alternatives, and they could go out and, and get on the offensive because they had an alternative to U.S. beans. And you know what? They were buying so many beans uh, that even at the lower cost, uh, they were paying a um, uh, uh, an excess charge in Brazil because the demand was so great for uh, to get them to, to uh, port and out. But this has been a in that regard a giant mistake. And Trump's tweet this morning acknowledges the mistake without acknowledging it because, of course, it takes a big man or big men. I don't just blame Trump. I'm blaming Lighthizer, who I have a lot of respect for, Navarro Ross. 
and um, and cuddle. It, wrong. You, you made a mistake here, and you're and you're paying for it. And the American farmer is paying for it. And he, today's tweet acknowledges it. You're going to hold Argentina, who's in a disastrous state economically, who needed a fifty-one billion dollar bailout from the IMF. You're you're. You're going to castigate them? You're out of your friggin' mind. You know what? That's lunacy. That's lunacy. And the fact that the media is not taking it apart and calling it for it is, is shame on the media because they should be whacking him for this. Rightfully so. And again, I, I have no political view here. This is not politics. This is policy because that's all I care about is the policy until, you know, other I see other things. But I'm a, I'm a policy wonk. And you, you know what? This is bad policy. And he they're admitting it's bad policy by throwing out that miserable tweet. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just it's just dead wrong. And and anybody who could sit comfortably in the US whatsoever in any asset class needs their head examined. Because that's just bad. Um, there is nothing right in that tweet. Nothing. All right. <clears throat> but I come back to how are we going to use it to make money? <laughs> because, because no, I, that's all we care about. If you're in this room, that's all you care about. You want to go, what, go put on MSNBC, go put on Fox and you know what, put two different earphones in it and listen and make yourself nuts. I, how this leads to profit potential. And you know what? This is a room of mercenaries. Sorry, and I'm I, my problem as a trader is I've never been mercenary enough. But this is mercenary. You know, we want to take it apart and understand it, and put it to use. Because otherwise, again, it's just gibberish, and we don't need to fill the airwaves with more gibberish. Lord knows there's enough that uh, sustains the uh, the daily news feed. Yeah, well, it's, it's been good, Ira. I mean, everybody this morning, I know it packs this room, pretty much everybody just, you know, I had guys that sold them last night in the 50s. Guys told me they sold them all over the place this morning. And pretty much everybody covered when we went down to 31, 11, 12. When we got the reverse yeah. on the 50 by three. And, uh, you know, it was a perfect spot to stop with the 200 uh, and the match in the 200 day moving average in the VIX. So, yeah, you know what? When the market opened as strong as it did last night, or the fact that it opened higher and, and rallied, well, I said, okay, what's that off the Chinese PMI, which probably it was, and that there was no other negative news out. And actually, you know, if you really looked at uh, what was coming out of Europe, there was no reason to buy stocks. You know, the DAX opened, uh, you know, when it opens at 7.15 Chicago time, I think it is, um, with the uh, it, the X opened a little higher last night and went up higher, as it should have, because the, the news out of Europe was actually positive to me assets, and and the uh, the German news on the uh, SPD uh, leadership change was was somewhat positive also. Um, so it made it made perfect sense. But I think when you go through the, you know, the Trump tweets and everything else, and yeah, higher now interest rates, you know, ran up, which is okay. I, you know, I, I get it. So the picture was correct because I'm telling you, I sold 47 and a quarters this morning when I bought the DAX when it was on its low at that time. So I was able to finesse a pretty good play. But it was, uh, and I'll take it, and I'm t I've got my remnants. I'm taking it off right here because we're down here again. Cause I had put it back on and I sold them back at 20, you know, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just trading cause I know, I know how early I am in this, in understanding this, but there are movements out there that to me, you know, as, as I've said, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Tinder that could ignite here. And this market has been way too complacent. Well, and you've got the setup for it now. And I've just put up the weekly S and P and 16 and a half is the ORL number in the S and P for the weekly. So the more yeah. time we spend under 16 and a half, the worse that's going to go. 
and all the risk spreads are, you got the ORL, we're, we haven't really bounced in NASDAQ bonds. Uh, Russell bonds are showing it. You know, you had the mid cap blew up on Friday and, you know, things are, the board's starting to change. Yeah. No, no. It, you know what? And we're glad. Again, we're glad it's starting to change because it needs to change. It need, it's healthy for the market. It's just, you know, they have sucked everybody in here as far as they can. You know, I got everybody. That's all they want to talk about is the market going up. Yeah, and there's nobody buying the first of the month. So nobody buying. Yeah. Well, they pushed it as far as they could through month end, didn't they? Yeah. And I'm telling you, there, there are certain things that we're going to watch to keep our eyes on. Especially the, uh, I think the European bank stocks and some of these stocks that have underperformed, you know, because the German auto sector has been plagued, plagued by the uh, Volkswagen and other diesel issues. And then plagued that they're far behind as far as electric. But one thing you can be sure of between the Japanese and the Germans who are really good engineers, because that's what they do. That's, that's the key to the, uh, the Japanese and uh, European export models is that they re-engineer products and make them better. So, you know, I know everybody, Tesla, listen, Elon Musk is a, is a friggin' genius. It doesn't make him the greatest businessman in the world, but he is a he is a friggin' genius, and he was able to push it. And he's really directing the whole change. It really won't surprise me at some point. They're trying to race ahead, meaning uh, Jaguar, BMW, Mercedes. Uh, they're they're trying to get ahead of the electric car. So because Tesla trades at too too big a premium to. Uh, it's it, it would be hard to buy Tesla. I thought they blew the opportunity. Hey, I go back to 2013 when I was on with Santelli at the end of 2013, and he and he actually uh, asked me a question he never asked me, which was my predictions for the uh, coming year. And I said uh, I thought GM. This was in uh, December of 2013 would buy Tesla because it only made eminent sense because um, Tesla had no showrooms but they had a product and GM had showrooms, but not really a product. So I thought that they could put Tesla's in the Cadillac showrooms and get a lot of foot traffic and it would help both sides of the coin. But well, uh, you gotta look right now is that the, um, uh, the XBI, which is the equal weighted biotax is putting an ORL day. So okay. that's a big topping pattern. And this has led the whole rally with biotech. So this starts losing traction. And it, you know, if this can come down another two, three bucks, it'd be normal. So that's yeah. gonna be a big driver going forward. And you got to pay attention to these sectors that led the, the rally. Everybody's bailing. I mean, Intel's putting an ORL day in. NVIDIA's just come back in, a, in a, uh, its averages. You know, you have to be very careful about what you're involved in here. Oh, there's no question. You, there's no question. Because you know what? All you do is have to listen to the uh, proverbial talking heads. I guess I'm a talking head in a sense. But the ones who are selling something, always selling something, is, you know, they're finding something to be bullish. Where's my rotation? Yeah, well, when everybody so, sells on a margin call, here, FedEx was up big this morning. It's getting smoked now. It's putting in an ORL pattern. Yeah. Well, you know, again, they've sold us and everybody who's bullish is convinced that the consumer is in, is in great shape. But meanwhile, Chris Whalen ran a piece with these debt numbers are ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, what, subprime auto loans? There was a big piece on that over the weekend. Right, right. You know what? And, and what people are paying. I'm going with my daughter tomorrow, Sophia, the chef, who's really a wonderful chef. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go help her buy a car tomorrow. And because uh, people like to take me, because I'm going to having grown up in the automobile business and been around people, in the, I, I'm going to go negotiate. But I'll tell you how it goes, because I know that they're not selling new cars. Are sales are slumping used car sales because you know people are looking to get quality cars uh, with some miles on it. 
so they don't have to uh, embark on that. But I want to see, I'm going to test the waters with her to see what they offer her as far as finance and probably buying a Subaru. Uh, I should probably call Mark Moeller because I like him and he's always, he always helps me, but I'm going to leave him alone because I'm not going to buy the car because she's down here in Scottsdale and it's just too, huh? Mark's a great guy. Mark's a great guy, Ira. I love that guy. Always like him. He is, he is a great guy. Always got along with him in the pit. He's a gentleman and he's always been a gentleman yeah. to me when I've asked him and, and I told him, I said, I'm not buying a car from you, but can you, and he always helped me. He's a really, really a fine gentleman. Really. I, if I could send it, if anybody's listening, to go to buy a Subaru or go go see Mark. <laughs> um, good guy. Anyway, I, I, very I'm, very I'm, good guy. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a minute late. I'm I'm, I'm cruising, um, cruising down sixty I sixty five from Louisville, Kentucky, back to Chicago. Louisville, Kentucky. I hope you're bringing whiskey. We all need it. Uh-huh. Plenty of bourbon. A lot of bourbon this just, weekend. Yeah, okay, anybody who wants to send me a Christmas gift, just send me a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, we'll open it. <laughs> All right. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. I got you. Yeah. That's solicita- I could get arrested for solicitation. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. We've been friends for too long. Okay. Uh, all right, but... Uh, you know what? Again, you know, this room really helps me. And uh, Mike, thanks for your thoughts. Keep everybody posted. You know, uh, Robert, pay attention to what's going on in Germany because we're going to need to hear from you. I heard from uh, uh, Green AB on the blog. He hasn't written of late, but he's one of my German readers who gives us uh, boots on the ground uh, and tells us what's going on. And he was on top of the election uh, for the uh, Social Democrats. So, again, lots of stuff going on. I find that Trump tweet should be absolutely decimated. You know, for all these people who want to beat on Trump, when he says something that is so ridiculously stupid, or stupid is too harsh, misinformed. It's so ridiculously misinformed. And what it does is reveal how bad their negotiation is going with China. That's what that reveals to me. Because they can't get any traction with the Chinese buying agricultural products from the U.S. because the Chinese are, again, they're slow walking this and taking advantage of it. The media should be crushing him on this, crushing him on this. But I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, All right. Again, stay nimble because there's a lot of stuff going on. The the more nimble you are, the more you can take advantage of it. Look at they're killing the hogs even today and the, the cattle's down. So it's all U.S. ag. Because somebody's getting a sense of, hey, you're not making any headway. Well, that, it's interesting that the, the Feb cattle went to one of those numbers and just stopped. And that, that was a level that was from a couple of years ago. And, and, and also, we'll watch these steepeners both ways. Because, again, if you were nimble, they did give you a nice... Uh, uh, chance, I think Pax uh, we talked about it, but uh, uh, on Wednesday, was, yeah, we talked on Wednesday, so it gave you some opportunity to uh, to maneuver around there. So that, that's all. You want to stay, you want to stay nimble and flexible here, of course, because between the algos and the uh, that read the tweets, uh, you get all kinds of insanity. And boy, we've seen a lot of insanity. And now we're coming into Brexit time, so we got ten days to Brexit. So. That'll be uh, also uh, on people's uh, radar. All right, I'm going to jump right. off. Thanks for one, one other thing here before you go. Uh, if yeah. if you want, um, well, here, hang on one second. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>